Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome to a progress update for What Lies Above. I've decided I'm going to do these instead of devlogs so I can actually work on the game. But yeah, I returned. Returned back to What Lies Above. I just can't... I can't quite leave this game behind. Now, a little bit's new. There's a, there's a few new things since the last devlog. I don't even remember what the... The last devlog was the line wrapping on this, wasn't it? Well, I made that whole video about the line wrapping... And then I removed it because it, it it's way more fun without the line wrapping. I'm not going to lie. The line wrapping is like a cool feature. It sounds cool. It looks cool. But in practice, it's kind of trash. It just makes it annoying to grapple around. Like, look, look I'm going to grapple here and swing around this house. And that was really fun. If there was line wrapping, I would have got caught and brought back because it would have. Yeah, it, it's, it's no fun. But anyways, what have I been working on? Essentially, I've only been back working on this for like four days, I think. Uh, I came back and I immediately noticed that this pond didn't have anything in it. It literally didn't have rocks in it or grass in it or even this dock or fish or nothing. I was like, dude, this is kind of lame. I was like, how did I think this was finished? So to get back in a swing of things, I, you know, made it look way nicer. I put some fish in there and gave it some life. Got some splash sounds, some some better splash sounds. So like if you if you jump in lightly, uh, if you jump in lightly, you get that little that sound. But if you throw something in, you get a you get a larger splash. Way nicer. Okay, I've just now realized that my buoyancy is frame rate dependent. <laughs> so I need to fix that. Whoops. Um, anyways, yeah, cause, cause things won't actually float in the editor and I was always confused as to why they just stopped floating randomly. And now I just now realized cause I'm in a bit, um, oh yeah, that UI on the side, when you pick something up, I'm going to change that slightly. Cause I'm not, not entirely happy with it. I think it needs to be like taller or something, but anyways, uh, what have I been working on? Basically NPCs. I've been working on NPCs. This right here, this is Marcus. I literally just added Marcus. So Marcus is the blacksmith and I can actually talk to Marcus here. And it'll do this really cool dialogue sequence. I can of course click to skip to the, to like, to like have it, you know, not play out the animation, click again, and we're out of di the dialogue. So this dialogue system is very primitive. It can't do conversations and it can't do like selections or anything like that. But it's a start. Um, the way this works is it's actually reading a JSON file. I'll, I'll get more into the specifics of things in a minute. Um, but first, let's let's go ahead and uh, let's walk in here. Here we have Magnus, Marcus's brother, and he's the butcher. So um, another NPC you can talk to. But the real star of the show. The NPC that I actually built the entire NPC system testing. Gotta be here. I didn't know if he would be over here or not. I had to actually just hope that he would be. <laughs> this is Garrick. And I've been seeing a lot of Garrick because I've been he he's he was the first NPC. Um and I spent a lot of time with only Garrick on this island because you know i wrote all of the systems with garrick the animations the pathing the npcs actually have a schedule uh kind of like i'm pretty sure the npcs in, yeah like in stardew valley they have a schedule like that so rather soon i believe garrick is gonna go and find another spot on the edge of the island and walk there and just chill there uh garrick kind of chills around the edge of the island um this dialogue here kind of explains his story. He's awaiting his father's return from beneath the clouds. Will his father return? He don't know yet. I might not know yet either, but I mean, that's besides the point. I got a lot of story writing, a lot of lore, a lot of backstories for characters, a lot of dialogue writing. I got a lot of that ahead of me. So it's going to be fun. I'm going to be able to get to tell my own story here in this world. And... It's really cool. 
It's really, really cool. Um, anyways, is there anything else that I need to show in the build? I mean, we have these Cloud in the Bottles. If you haven't ever seen this game, this is what lies above. Uh, I made a version of this game four years ago. And then I was like, okay, that's cool. And then like a year ago, I decided I wanted to re... I wanted to come back to the idea of the game and give it an actual like story and purpose and gameplay. Because when I originally made the original What Lies Above, it, it was never finished. It I didn't really know what I was making. I was just making random stuff. Uh, the whole idea for What Lies Above came from being able to control something by interacting with it like this. So this is kind of the whole idea of What Lies Above. It came from this. And it's pretty neat. Um, it's really cool. But it all stemmed from just an airship controller that I had made. And then I needed a floating island. And then I needed this and that and this and that. And the game turned into I don't know what. And I quit. And then I decided I wanted to try again and actually come back with a plan. And here we are. And what lies above. Okay. Now that's out of the way. Um, We have this utility system here. Uh, these are utilities. You have four utility slots. You can have four utilities uh, equipped at once. Um... You can see that this is stackable and these are cloud in the bottles. If you played something like Terraria, you already know what this is. I can double jump, but this is stackable and I have three of them equipped so I can jump three times. Then I have this glider grants the user the ability to fall slower. If I hold space, a glider will appear a bit above me um, and I will fall slower. Um, you can kind of tie that in with a lot of the movement and it just feels really fun. I really love the movement in this game. It's, it's really fun. To just get a bunch of speed and carry that speed. Maybe maybe the, the glider is a little overpowered. But I think it'll probably be a late game item. Um, also, another, another thing to be careful about is... Uh, this airship here. Yeah, I can get around quite easily. But... Early in the game, you won't have the grappling hook or the cloud in the bottles and stuff like that. So, whenever you have your airship here, you're going to want to tie it down so it don't drift away from the wind. From the wind pushing it. Uh, so that'll keep it from going anywhere. Oh, I guess that collider needs <laughs> it's a little bit of work, doesn't it? Uh, I can fix that up. No problem. Um, so we can see... Um, Magnus here is actually sitting down now. If you remember, he was standing up earlier. So throughout the day, he'll he'll sit down and stand up. I'm thinking when he's standing here, he'll probably like grab a, a cleaver and chop up some meat or something. Just do something to make the world feel a bit more alive, right? Um. So I suppose that's everything I need to show in the build. Um. Let me let me alt F4 this and go back into the engine here. So I can kind of show you. The, the systems here built around these NPCs that I, that I think I come up with some pretty all right plans. Um, instead of sitting there for 10,000 years and trying to plan out something, I decided I would, it's probably best if I just started making something. So I did. So here we can see uh, the NPCs on Skeldrick Island, Garrick, Magnus, and Marcus. Let's look at Garrick. Garrick here has a scriptable object, an NPC object, and he's got seven schedules. Now, what a schedule is, is essentially just a schedule for a day of the week. And there's seven of them because, well, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? And he has the same exact schedule in all of these because he does the same thing every single day. At 6 a.m., he goes to one of these benches and sits down. At 9 a.m., he goes somewhere random on the island edge and stands there. At 12 a.m. or p.m., he finds a different island edge, then 3 p.m., which is 15 uh, finds another island edge, and then at 18, which is 6 p.m., he goes back here and sits there for 12 hours until he moves to another bench and then repeats the cycle, right? So that's Garrick. He's pretty simple. And I can actually show, um, if I play this unfocused, I can show, we'll see the time down here at the bottom right. See, in the editor, I actually have uh, a few hotkeys I can press. So we can see Garrick is 
going to go sit down at one of these benches. Okay. There you go. Takes a seat. And then if I just hold numpad three, you can see I'm going to accelerate time. You see it's nine. It's past nine. He's going to go to an island edge. And then once this gets to what was it? 12. So I'm going to skip ahead. 12. Oh, no. He's going to a different one. Uh, if I skip ahead faster, all the way back to nighttime, he's going to go find another bench and sit down at a bench here in the middle. Okay. How does this work? It's actually quite simple. The schedule here is an object name, bench, and all of the NPCs on Skeldrick Island have a reference to this object here, the navigation objects. And we can see bench, island edge, the two objects that we saw in Garrick's schedule. Okay, let's look at bench. Okay, now we'll see all these random uh, uh, objects here. And these have something called a navigation object. And for every single one of these, these have seat checked. What a seat does is essentially just has a children object that positions them properly when they sit down. Um, that's whatever. But as you can see, like, it literally just picks a random one of these and goes there if there's nobody else there. Um, if it can't find one or if they're all occupied, then he'll just be like, well, I'm just going to stay where I'm at then. But that should never happen in theory. As long as I make the schedules actually coherent, that should never happen. Um, then we can see, like, the island edge here is literally just, uh, what, eight edge points around the island, just scattered all the way around this. Um, this edge point here is actually a seat, and he can actually sit here on the end of the dock. Now, when he gets up, he kind of floats in the air and then teleports on, but there's not much I can do about that without different animations, and... I'm I'm not really an animator. These are all all these animations came from Mixamo. So it is what it is for now. Um But I mean that's kind of how the, the scheduling system works. Now the way the dialogue system works is a bit different. Um I'm not gonna go super in depth. I'm just gonna show this file right here. Why are you what why are you frozen? Okay, Visual Studio Code. We have here Let's see Garrick's dialogue. This is all of Garrick's dialogue. And we can see the conversations here. This is just a JSON file. Uh, we, have, we have this requirement type, which is set, is set to custom parameter here, near windmill. When he is near, a, near the windmill, and the way that's determined is I have these NPC triggers, and I have this windmill one, and when an NPC is in the zone, this custom parameter is set to true. When they leave it, it gets set to false, which allows me to have parameters on if they're near something they will say different things so if they're near the fountain they'll say different things and then down here at the very bottom so my system goes from top to bottom trying to find the first thing that matches it also has a chance so let's say this passes the requirement check then my system will take a random value between zero and one and if it just so happens to be less than the chance then this succeeds and it goes and it rolls with this right um, anytime it sees like an array here in the text, it picks a random one. And then at the very bottom, since it works from top to bottom, we have the ones that have no requirement and these can always happen. So it's a pretty simple system. We, it supports rich text in there. As you saw, whenever we were talking to him, Nomad was turning green. Um, it's a pretty cool system. I think it's going to be hopefully nice to use cause I'm going to be using it quite a lot. I do, I, I am thinking that I'm going to swap this part of the schedule system to use JSON files instead, just because it seems like it'd probably be easier than, than navigating through here if I could just have text files open and edit them. Now, I'm not sure about that, but I probably will do that, honestly. It just seems like it'd be, it'd be nicer to, to do something like that. Uh, anyways, I guess that's all for this progress update. Uh. This is not the usual style of devlog that I would normally do, but editing those is just, I just don't really like editing. I like work. I like making the game. So I, I, I feel like I'm just probably going to stick with this kind of style for a while. It, it was pretty fun when I was working on, on Soul VR to just, just make these little progress updates instead. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for what lies above. Uh, I'm not sure when the next progress update's gonna gonna come out. There's quite a lot of work to be done. I need to make the rest of the NPCs on this island. 
finish all their dialogues. And then I got a lot of work to do on the dialogue system to support things like, um, conver like, like actual conversations that aren't just a single line. It needs to support things like, uh, selection. So you can select options when talking to an NPC. I mean, it needs to be able to support, like, if, if, if something in the story happens, NPCs should be able to know and, and say something about that. Basically, there's a whole lot of implementation I need to do for my dialogue system. There goes Garrick. But I can say, even with just a few NPCs, this is already feeling like such a, a more alive world. Just being able to go over and talk to them and just see them walking around and and uh, I'm sure it's gonna that that is going to exponentially grow the more NPCs I have walking around because I mean let's face it most of the time uh you know Magnus and Marcus are just kind of chilling around they don't really go do much uh, I am thinking about maybe making a navigation object that is like a conversation object that can hold a few people. And whenever there's more than one person there, they'd play like uh, animations of like them conversing. It'd feel more alive because it would like, it, it would like show uh, the NPCs like, you know, talking to each other. I think that'd be really cool. Man, he really knows how to find some good views, doesn't he? I really love the aesthetics that I have in this game. I love the, the, just, you know, just super low poly, just good lighting on low poly. Just, it's always looked really interesting to me. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This is 17 minutes. I did not plan on that. Um, but, uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to, uh, subscribe, drop a like. Hey, drop a comment on uh, if you guys have anything to say about the game, and I'll see you guys in the next progress update. Peace out.